What is science? Let's approach this point. Science is what improves the lives of all of us, what makes our lives safer and better. It is what gives us health, right? That's what science is. A simple question. What has science given us? It has given us airplanes, so we fly. What else has science given us? Microwave ovens, so that we can heat up sandwiches in the morning. Is this actually bad? This is great. Science has given us an opportunity to talk to you right now. Is this bad? It's wonderful. It's wonderful. But what has science given us in terms of fighting climate and predicting the most serious, deadly earthquakes and eruptions? Honestly, zero. All their promises about climate that we will stop it, we will overcome it. The only thing they have given us is enormous economic problems for various farmers, commodity producers and so on, you know, is like a tool of manipulation and actually competition, that is, suppression of competition. There is no other way to call it when they impose quotas on some companies and the latter cannot cope and are forced to limit their production. Meanwhile, the climate, pardon me, is only aggravating. So what's the point in all of that? A simple question. Also, why do those same scientists have such a negative attitude to volunteers from all over the world who have united on the Creative Society platform? That's very simple, friends. What we say is coming true. What they say does not come true, because they have neither knowledge nor understanding. While we are, excuse me, like competitors who appeared out of nowhere, nobody funds or provides for us, neither the state nor any serious, whatever, institutions or organizations. There are no subsidies or grants, nothing. At the same time, everything that we told you and keep telling you is accurately happening. There is also such a point, Igor Mihailovich, you've said regarding scientists that by appointing someone a fool, a person becomes smarter against this background. Well, that's a natural process. Let's just say, if any of us feels that we are stupider than our interlocutor, what should we do, Perry, by calling him a fool, right? That's what scientists do. But especially when two people meet and discuss the third person, while he is smarter than both of them, what will they say? He's a fool. How can he understand anything? And they immediately feel better, because in each other's eyes they have become smarter by calling someone a fool. In exactly the same way, us, millions of people around the world, volunteers, who have been seriously studying for many decades what these scientists should have studied, these very scientists call us fools saying that we know nothing and understand nothing. It turns out that everything is much more serious, and for this, you know, you need to take a volcanic rock and say, this is a stone. And do you know what the most interesting thing is? That a lot of people see a stone in the hands of a scientist who says something about volcanoes and, and claims to be a volcanologist, and this immediately impresses people. But when millions of people around the world talk, thoroughly study and know at the molecular level, or, let's say, even at a deeper level, what this stone consists of and why it was formed, they know what this scientist who holds this stone has not the slightest idea about. That is not impressive. What this scientist studies on sugar volcanoes, on the models of sugar volcanoes, They conduct yes. experiments and observe reactions. Well, it's actually sheer nonsense when adults, excuse me, create volcanoes out of sugar and study these processes. How magma behaves. Just tell me, isn't it funny? It's just ridiculous. When adults play children's games and pretend to be smart, why? Because in reality they cannot climb into that volcano. In fact, they do not even know how our Earth is arranged entirely. Everything is based on guesses, everything is approximate. Well, what is happening, excuse me, is an accurate mathematical model. It is possible to specify quite precisely what will happen tomorrow. And unfortunately, it will happen tomorrow. This is what scientists should have studied and this is what they should have warned us about at least 10 years ago. But when we warned people about that, we appeared to be fools. Do you know why? Because our volunteers are people of various specialties. We have translators who read works on volcanology, 
we have, excuse me, people who engaged in, their job is to cook, they are cooks, excellent cooks, but they are engaged in something completely different, they are engaged in promoting the creative society. You see, everyone doesn't do what they studied for. But you know what is most interesting? It turns out great. Just super. And this is wonderful, because there are a lot of us, and because we are people. Because we do it sincerely. And sincerely. It would be good for scientists to have the same enthusiasm as people have. As for our enthusiasm, it is also due to the fact that we really understand the situation that is coming and the one that is already happening, without illusions and without rose-colored glasses. Hence the enthusiasm. We just want to live. That's the problem. And the fact that we know there is a way out also gives us enthusiasm. This is also serious. This unites, brings together and encourages at least to fight for life, to fight for the planet.